इनफो सामने के यूट्यूब पे मैंने इसको लाइव स्ट्रीम किया है पीडी के पेज पे अपनी क्लास में चेक कर पे मैंने इसको लाइव स्ट्रीम किया है पीडी के पेज पे अपनी क्लास में Hi Akruti, how are you? Am I audible? <clears throat> Hi everyone. guys so let me start my session and uh, here you go uh, i am starting my session today for what is iso <clears throat> so in the previous session we learned about aperture and shutter speed that is the most essential part of exposure triangle today since you are talking about iso i am sure you might have seen such kind of film roles yep so the most important thing that comes down can you notice this different numbers on the screen on this picture there is 100 800 400 1600 
Now, 100, 400, 800, 600 means what? So, guys, earlier when photographers used to use, shoot with film rolls, they don't have that function of film speeds. They don't have the function, they didn't have the function of ISO in the camera. They used to control the speed of the film roll by using these multiple ISO film rolls. So if a film roll is written 1600, that means 1600 is the speed of the film roll. It's faster. If the speed of the film roll is 100, the speed of the film roll is slower while turning. Then the sensitivity index, 100 and 1600, there are two differences. 100 less sensitive, 1600 more sensitive. Like the way we use UV or UV or sunscreen lotions. So we have different SPF to, to the value. Similarly, these film rolls used to have different kind of uh, speeds and sensitivity. 1600 being the most sensitive, 100 being the less sensitive. So the kind of exposure they used to get, that used to be very different. Hello. Hi, Mega. How are you? You are late. Yeah. Hi. Actually, uh, I'm trying to connect to Wi-Fi, but in my laptop, I think there is some issue and the Wi-Fi Good. is not getting connected. So, so, I can so to let's, let's, let's be uh, on the session. We are talking about ISO. So ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. It also tells about the sensitivity of your camera roll or the film roll. And it also tells you the speed of the film roll with which it starts changing. It is the sensitivity to the light. Now, in a certain point of time, I suppose in the evening when sun is about to set, there are three photographs of a same object that's a rose in three different ISO conditions. ISO 50, ISO 400, and ISO 1600. What we can see is on the left-hand side, ISO 50 is darker. ISO 400 is uh, average image and 1600 is too bright. That means in the same lighting condition, when ISO 1600 we have selected, it has absorbed light from every corner and made a picture too bright. But if you see and notice very carefully, this picture has got some grains, haziness. This picture has got less grains. So with increase of ISO, we get more grains into the picture. I repeat my whole thing. It's just a quick recap. Lower the ISO. It is used in the bright light conditions. Higher ISO, we use in dark light conditions like moonlight, dark nights, and all this thing. 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600. There are a lot of cameras which support 3200, 6400, 12,500 kind of ISOs also. So higher the number of ISO, chances are to get brighter image. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, we are talking about this chart. This chart tells you more of the usage of ISO. So when we start shooting, we get to see three things, I, A, and S. The moment we are stepping out with our camera, we should see what kind of the day or what kind of conditions are we shooting. Are we shooting in a sunny day 
or the shady day or the cloudy day or evening or night or very dark night what is the condition outside so the first thing since we said this rule as ias the first thing is you will set up your iso accordingly so if you are shooting in a sunny day it should be 100 if you are shooting in a bright day or uh, you know uh, sunlight or something like that uh, it is 100 but if it is cloudy day 400 in the evening iso has to be 800 then you start setting up your apertures and shutter speeds so iso i is the first thing to understand you can see this image on a screen if you see closely there are grains around the image is beautiful but these are grains on the picture this grainy picture is because there is no miracle done by the photographer there was no grains in the air but it is the fact that photographer has worked on higher iso higher iso leads to more grains friends this is very easy to understand into photography so my exposure triangles is like this so i didn't understand like is grains good or bad sometimes grains are good sometimes only but most of the times we should avoid grains because grains disturbs our picture badly and don't let you get it printed on a bigger format so one to try to always shoot on the lowest tier so possible according to the situation it's not recommended that if you are in the sunny day you are shooting at 800 iso you should try to shoot at 100 now three things we learned about exposure triangle the first aperture we can see biggest aperture smaller aperture number 1.8 is the biggest aperture background is blur smallest aperture bigger aperture number background is clear then we have shutter speed slow shutter speed our subject in motion appears blurry fast shutter speed subject in motion appears sharp frozen iso higher the iso image looks grainy bright lower the iso image is not at all grainy so iso is all about grains also again a recap more light needed when you have smaller aperture less light needed when you have the bigger aperture faster shutter speed means more light you need bright time only you can use faster shutter speed night time when you have less light you use slow shutter speed iso 50 when you have more bright light iso 25000 when you have dark darkness and you want to get light from the environment sensitivity increases so iso actually increases the sensitivity of the camera and it absorbs the every possible light that can be there now if you have a camera it has two modes so this is strictly for those people who have their uh, slr with them if you have a camera there are two modes tv and av tv is also known as shutter priority mode av is known as aperture priority mode so we should always use auto iso function in tv mode we should not use it in av mode 
now there are two images is there any specific reason for tv mode yes uh, because tv mode is shutter priority you have set up your shutter on the higher speed or the lower speed so i also can adjust accordingly on av mode it won't now we have got two examples you can see a child making a splash in the puddle which picture do you like the most top or the bottom top top not the bottom it depends like uh, there is like it softness is there and in the bottom one more clarity is there so if i tell you if i ask you what is giving more meaning to the picture that the kid is playing in the puddle the top or the bottom the bottom so first of all if you remember i am sure you remember that we were talking about uh, waterfall fountains we said slow shutter speed right so you try to relate that thing over here but here if you see the water is not falling we are splashing it so we want to see actually where the water is mm -hmm. so the fall of the water the beauty of the water thing the splash is captured beautifully well in the bottom picture am i right yeah that beauty that it has done the splash so that a photographer needs to know and that is why i have kept this example uh, you know specifically in my course that as an onlooker we should understand and differentiate what is good and what is not good here if i have to freeze the flash i have to make my shutter very fast over my shutter speed was 1 by 20th here my speed is 1 by 300 so fast right in that scenario camera will take less light because it's faster they are falling faster in that much of time to get more light into the camera what i did is i increased my iso so the moment i increased my so i got the same amount of light but at the faster speed and i could freeze the motion over i was getting up to like 100 but my shutter speed was slow and water doesn't have its own luminosity so i could not see much of trails coming out of it if the child would have made a splash on molten lava then those splash would have looked nice on a slow shutter speed so as a photographer you need to understand the subject motion time light and then create the picture as a layman you need to understand both the things clearly which is a good picture which is a bad picture you should be able to relate to that i have already given you this example some sample iso status when you click with the 5d mark 2 so the first thing that you can see is 12800 the frame is too grainy 6400 less grainy 3200 again for the less grainy and so on when you reach 100 frame gets 
less grain here. Am I very right? Okay, so if uh, we are achieving like uh, no grains at 100, then why do we try to go to higher sensitivity just for the light and more sensitivity? So suppose you are shooting in the evening and you are not getting too much of light, you want some bright picture to happen. Say, suppose you are out with your family and friends out on uh, some trip and you want a good group shot to happen, but suddenly uh, you find that there is no light. Everybody is coming dark. How do you want to capture the place moment with everyone so bright? In that moment, you will increase ISO. Okay, so if I understand it correctly, in the darkness, uh, we can use the higher ISO to capture the light. Yes. We but will it also, ISO. yeah, but will it also impart grains in that? Yes. Higher ISO will definitely leave grains. You cannot avoid it. But the only benefit you will get is you can capture that moment with clarity. Okay. It gives you one power, but takes another one with your hand. Okay. Right? It's a sensitivity index. Some images when you click in the night, it's the, uh, you know, star trail. You cannot shoot stars like this unless until you have higher ISO in the camera. When these stars also appear too bright to you. These paintings you can do, star trail paintings you can do from a camera. This happens because earth is moving all the time. And when earth is moving all the time, we have to fix up a focus, keep our camera on a tripod and leave it on the longest of exposures. This exposure can be one hour, two hours, four hours, five hours. The longer the exposure, bigger and the denser will be these trails because stars and earth is moving. Everything remains fixed, rest the entire sky keeps on moving slowly, 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 and you will get these star trails. So this it is using must... slow speed and high ISO. Yes, very good. You will have slow speed and high ISO. And slow speed is like once you press the button, it will remain pressed for five hours. And then you will release it then only too much of light will happen inside. That's the beauty of the picture. This is a device which helps you out to take long exposures. Just imagine you're clicking and keeping the finger like this for five hours. Can you imagine? Finger will definitely move. And the moment it moves, means you've taken the shot. So in that scenario, you have this device, which once you press and set up the time that it has to click and release it after one hour, two hours, three minutes, 10 minutes, it will do it automatically for you. That's the device you use. Now, I have talked about three things, IS, uh, IAS. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. I want to tell you about what is white balance. Before that, I wanted all you to get a glimpse on certain more things. You understand uh, why surf excels or aerial ad works and how does they work? सर्फ एक्सेल का ऐड आता है तो एक पीली सी शर्ट दिखती है अचानक से वो चला जाता है तो वाइट हो जाती है व्हाट डू दे डू क्या सर्फ एक्सेल इतना अच्छा काम करता है नो देन एरियल टाइड नो दे डोंट देन दे वाइटनिंग इट इट इज द फिनोमेना ऑफ वाइट बैलेंस they just tweak the light in the system to show it yellow and white. So, 
the white valence is the color of an object affected by the light conditions and now you might have also noticed you have got a white beautiful dress or a shirt or something which when it is new it looks white and after 40 washes it appears white to you until you get a new white and then you realize this white is no more a white and the new is a white and this is a yellow one has this happened to you before mm -hmm. yeah or does this not happen to you at all it used to happen to the school shirts yeah maybe maybe these days also in the corporate life when you have a, a handkerchief or anything a white towel you yeah. know the first thing it looks very white after certain uses it still looks white to you you will always call it a white but it's not white and you realize that it's not white when you get a new white towel it's just because our eyes gets adjusted to it that we could not understand what is bright white and what is not so white balance is also the same thing to the camera you need to tell your camera what is right white so every camera gives you this kind of feature what kind of white balance do you require auto incandescent fluorescent direct sunlight flash cloudy shady what kind of uh, thing you would like need canon gives you this kind of an option so in photography wb is known as white balance so white balance is basically the color temperature chart color temperature is measured in kelvins and used the symbol k like we manage the temperature and we uh, we measure it in terms of celsius or fahrenheit in photography we measure temperature into kelvins so 10000 kelvin means the coolest temperature we have 1000 kelvin means we have the warmest temperature around pictures appears to be too dark red so these are certain color temperatures which you should know candle when you're shooting in a for a candle or something 1000 sunrise and sunset 2000 tungsten bulb 2800 morning and evening sun 3500 fluorescent lamp 4000 kelvin sunlight during the midday 5500 cloudy and overcast sky 6000 shady sky 7500 clear blue sky 10000 kelvin this is how you set up the sensitivity index of your camera also what time, what occasion are you shooting? It's the same repeat. And this is the difference of these white balances. Same building, six different white balance. Aapke wala white kaun sa hai? Meaning? Sorry. Which is your favorite white out of these six? They all are white, mind you. I mean, they all are good. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it's difficult to differentiate which is good or which is bad. If you want to look at some bluish shade, then I think the first one is good. And uh, you know, if you are looking for some warm kind of uh, image, then the shade, the fifth one is looking good. Okay. 
uh, I would say it is all about the requirement of your shoot. You need very bright and warm image. Shade or cloud is a good option. You need an average looking image. Daylight is an option. You want to shoot during the daylight, but want to show it's a winter morning, winter afternoon. You can talk about tungsten or fluorescent as well. So that's how white balance changes the picture at the same time. Some more, uh, you know, variations of white balance. A same field can appear green on an auto white balance and can appear dark barren on 3000 or native. Native is the actual. Again, I'm repeating clear sky, 10,000 to 15,000 color temperature. And a candle flame is 1000 to 2000 uh, Kelvin is the temperature. Flashlight, which camera flashes the rose, is 5000 to 5500 Kelvin. Fluorescent is your tube light, which throws 4000 to 5000 Kelvin. So, this is about a white balance. And white balance is also a must when you're shooting anything outdoors. Then you know what is your optimum result. Now, there is a war. The war is what is megapixel. His camera is 48 megapixel. My camera is 16 megapixel. He is superior. But what is megapixel? Any idea? No. Our mobile phone cameras are megapixel cameras. So, pixel is considering one pixel is equivalent to one inch by one inch. So, we call it one pixel per inch, PPI. Can you see this? A pixel is the most tiniest and the smallest form of breaking an image. So, pixels are measured into inches. Like the way we have divided shutter speed, like it's a part of one second. Similarly, we divide pixels as a part of one inch. So the leftmost is one inch by one inch. We got one pixel. If we try to add two into this, it will become two pixels per inch. If we try to add four, ideally it has got four by four, 16, but it's known as four pixels per inch. Now if we add 16 on the left and 16 on the top, it becomes 256. It will be known as 16 pixels per inch. In a single inch, more the number of pixels, better the image. Because you can zoom it, because the density of pixel increases in that one inch. On the left hand side, you can see in this image, which is of a spot, one dot, round dot. It has got 10 pixels per inch and the other one has got 20 pixels per inch, which is more dense. The second one. The second one. And it will zoom a lot. Now, I've got one three circles, each circle has got pixels, one has got 72 pixels, third has 150 and the third one is 300. Which is more denser? 300. So it's the density of dots per inch which, desired, which denotes pixels. Now talking about megapixels. 
so when you buy a camera when you go out you try whether or you buy a lcd or led or any device or a monitor or a laptop they will tell you ma'am it has got an hd screen or it has got a 4k screen so ideally they are telling you that if it is an hd screen it will have 1080 pixel by 1920 pixels multiply it in your uh, calculator Two lakh seventy three. No, it's not two lakhs. Twenty twenty lakh seventy three thousand six hundred. That means it's two million. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So this is two million means two megapixels. Sorry, twenty megapixels. Two million means twenty megapixels. Hmm. Now the next number two one six zero multiplied by three eight four zero. No, so it is eighty two uh, lakhs ninety four thousand. So eighty two megapixels. megapixels. Right, mm -hmm. that is a four K. Now four K is just the double of HD. You can see one zero eight zero double two one six zero on the top one nine two zero double three eight four zero, right? So why it is so called four K? Four K because it's just not about the dimensions. It's not two D three D. They call it four K because it gives you four times the volume. You know, uh, four times the. Uh, Megapixels of uh, HD, so they call it 4K. Okay. Because that was 20 megapixels. This is 82 megapixels. It's a four times. Hmm. So that's why they call it 4K. Okay. Right. So you got something about uh, how megapixels work. Any questions you have or anything you want to ask? No, that's fine. That's why. I would like to keep my today's class a little short, since I am still on a shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be continuing with the session tomorrow, at the same time, and mm -hmm. we will be learning loads about other phenomena. Will that be okay with all of you? Yeah. Great. Thank you, Megha. Have a nice day.